I'm a PhD student, and today I'm doing a grade 7 math contest. But these are the rules. I have one minute to solve each question, and I'm not allowed to use a pencil or a calculator. In addition, for every question that I get wrong or I run out of time, I have to put an ice cube down my shirt. I'm ready to take this on. Let's get started. Here's the front page of the contest. As soon as I click start, we're going. All right, ready, set, go. All right. Question one, uh, the value of three times four divided by six. Now this is a tough question, guys, because you see that I actually have to multiply and divide, which is something I'm not used to doing as a physicist because I use a calculator. Uh, now I think this is 12 divided by six, so the correct answer I believe is two, or B. No ice down my shirt yet. 0 0.8 minus 0 0.07. Now this is one of these, you know, uh, annoying questions where you know, you think maybe it's 0 0.8 minus 0 0.7, right? If you're a kid in grade seven and you're going through this quick. Uh, but no, I'm a uh, big brain here and I know that this is 0 0.73. These are tough questions, guys. This is a math contest. All right, question three. Contestants on Ghost Reality TV are rated by an applause meter. In the diagram, the arrow for one of the contestants is pointing to a rating that is closest to, uh, I would say, 9.7, it's right in the middle there. Let's go with C. All right, we're home safe so far. This is gonna get a lot harder, by the way. You start getting into the later questions and it gets more and more and more difficult. Uh, 12 million added to 12,000 equals, uh, well, this is 12 million and this is 12,000, so I believe the answer is A. Okay, I'm doing good so far. Five, the largest number in the set, 0 0.109, 0 0.2, 0 0.111, 0 0.114, and 0 0.19. Well, it's gotta be 0 0.2. And that is B. All right, all right. These are the easy ones. I gotta be, uh, I gotta be, you know, not working up a sweat here. At a class party, each student randomly selects a wrapped prize from a bag. The prizes include books and calculators. There are 27 prizes in the bag. Megan is the first to choose a prize. If the probability of Megan choosing a book for her prize is two thirds, how many books are in the bag? Well, there's 27 prizes, and uh, this might be a trick. Gotta read it carefully. The uh, probability of her choosing a book is two thirds, and she's the first to choose a prize. Then um, I believe that there would be nine, 18, 27, so 18 books in the bag. Correct, okay, good, no ice yet. Karen has just been chosen the new math idol. A total of a million blah 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 votes were cast and 80. Karen received 83% of them. How many people voted for her? Now I don't have a calculator here, so this is gonna be some mental math. Uh, 83%, mm, that's about, that's gonna be more than 200,000 for sure. Less than that, so I would say uh, B or C. Now the question is, uh, what's it gonna be? Hmm. I think the answer is C, because that's 380,000. And is it 80 a little more? Yeah, I think the answer is C. This is a gamble here, because I don't have a calculator. Please be correct. Oh, no. Oh. Well, apparently my mental math game isn't that good. So here's a block of ice, and here it goes nothing, and that's really uncomfortable. All right, question eight. In the diagram, the size of delta A, oh, this ice. <laughs> <laughs> a, C, B. Well, I got 93 degrees here. That means that this angle here is 50 degrees because this sums to 180. 93 plus 50 is 143. So this has to be 37. And the answer must be B. Correct. Good. No more ice. A movie theater has 11 rows of seats. The seats are numbered 1 to 11. Odd number rows have 15 seats and even have 16. How many seats are there in the theater? Well, okay. Odd number rows 1... 11, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. We have six rows times uh, 15. Six times 15, 60, 30, 90. So 90, remember that 90, 90, 90. And uh, even numbered rows have 16 seats. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 160, 90 plus 160. Uh, am I doing something wrong here? Five times 16 is 50, 30, uh, 80. So it should be 170. The answer is D. 
and I'm getting through this no problem, except for that one question, which was uh, just a, a minor glitch. No. Uh, in relation to Smith Balls, Ontario, the local time of St. John's, Newfoundland is 90 minutes ahead, and the local time of Whitehorse is three hours behind. Uh, uh, Smith Falls, Ontario is 90 minutes ahead. St. John's is 90 minutes ahead. So, Smith Falls, Newfoundland is 90 minutes ahead. Whitehorse is three hours behind. When St. John's is 536, Smith Falls is 90 minutes behind, 406. And Whitehorse is three hours behind that, 106. It's gotta be 106 unless I'm misreading something. I gotta answer now though. Correct, okay, good. I thought I might've got that wrong. That was a little tricky. This ice is really not feeling good here. Uh, the temperature range on a given day and a difference. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. The given day is the difference between the daily high and the daily low. Okay, good, on the graph below, which day has the greatest temperature difference? Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. It looks like that's going, oh, and of course they make them close for someone like me with time pressure. What a cruel thing, 10 degrees. Uh, b 6 plus 3 is 9 degrees. This is definitely less. Uh, minus 5, minus 5 to 4, 9 degrees. It's looking like it's going to be Monday. Answer is A. Correct, good. A bamboo plant grows at a rate of 105 centimeters today, uh, per day. On May 1st at noon, it was two meters tall. How tall will it be on May 8th at noon? Well, that's uh, two, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven days. Um, seven times 105 is 700, 7.35 meters. So it's gotta be 9.35 9 meters. Answer is E. All right, good. In the diagram, the length of DC is twice the length of BD, the area of ABC. So uh, DC is twice the length of BD. So three, this has got to be six. The area of the triangle, a one half base times height. So six plus three is nine. Nine times four is 36 divided by two is 18. The answer is D. All right, going, going pretty quick here. Uh, the number of opposites, the numbers on opposite sides of a die total seven. What is the sum of the numbers on the unseen faces? They total the numbers on opposite sides of a die total seven. I didn't know that. What is the sum of the numbers of the unseen faces of the two die? Well, this is two, this must be five, one, and four. 5 plus 1 plus 4 uh, is 10. And uh, 10, so remember that, 10, 10. Uh, I got 1 plus 2, uh, no, 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 2 plus 3, 5, 11, it's 21, 21. Correct, all right. Only got this one ice so far, it's not feeling good, but better than uh, more than that. In the diagram, the area of the rectangle P, Q, R, S is 24. If T, Q is equal to T, R, so these are equal, the area of the quadrilateral P, T, R, S, P, T, R, S is, well, it's um, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, 24. Um, these are equal, so this P, T, R, S, this triangle is one fourth the area of the square, so this is because you know that this would cut here and then you get to uh, like two things here and then you could split this into four things. Um, not sure if that's making sense, but uh, I have 24 minus six, 18. So this area has to be 18, which is A. Good. We're getting into the hard questions now. I'm not looking forward to this. Just kidding, I'm gonna wreck it. Uh, Nicholas is counting the sheep in a flock as they cross the road. The sheep begin to cross the road at 2 p.m. at a constant rate of three sheep per minute. Okay, after counting 42 sheep, Nicholas falls asleep. So how many minutes is that? Uh, three to 42, 10, 14, so 14. He wakes up an hour and a half later, at which point exactly half the flock has crossed the road since 2 p.m. How many sheep are there in the entire flock? So 42 sheep. Oh, this is, 
This is a time cruncher. 42 sheep falls asleep. That is uh, 14. 14. 214. He wakes up an hour and a half later. 214. Uh, 244. 344. It's an hour and 44 minutes. 104 minutes times three is. Um, Time's up. All right. The answer I was looking for wasn't there anyway, so here goes block number two, and I'm putting this down in the back. And it doesn't feel so great. And I'm already say eight seconds in. The symbol three, four, five, six is evaluated as three times four, six plus four times five is 38. Um, three times six plus four times five. Hey, this looks kind of like a determinant, but with a plus sign. So if that's true, then two times blah plus one times six is equal to 16. Two times X plus six is equal to 16. X is equal to five. The answer is E. This ice. This ice. Question 18. A game is said to be fair if your chance of winning is equal to your chance of losing. Okay, I, I agree here, which in this particular case, this game I'm playing right now, my chance of losing is very high and much higher than my chance of winning. So this game is very unfair. But going back to the question, how many of the following games involve in tossing a regular six-sided die are fair? You win if you roll a two, not fair. You win if you roll an even number, that's fair. You win if you roll a number less than four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is fair. And this is fair. My th clock went away. These two are fair. You win if you roll a number divisible by three. Three, six. No, that's not fair. Only the two of them are fair. So the answer is two. Or C. Correct. Good, 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 good. Chris and Pat are playing catch, standing one meter apart. Pat throws the ball to Chris and then Chris throws the ball back. Oh God, this mentally thing. I can't draw this. So you got Chris and you got Pat. Next, standing two meters apart, Pat, standing two meters apart, Pat throws to Chris, Pat, Pat throws to Chris and Chris throws back to Pat. After each pair of throws, Chris moves one meter away from Pat. They stop playing when one of them misses the ball. If the game ends when the 29th throw is missed, how far are they apart standing and who misses the ball? Okay, that, oh, that's really annoying. So. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, oh, this is like one of these annoying boundary things. I'm going to have to say, you know, they're all really close. I can't quite think of this. Chris throws one, Pat throws two. Chris throws three. I'm gonna have to go. I'm just gonna be. Uh, time's up. I don't know what the answer was to that there. I could have drawn that out, but here goes ice cube number three. And it's going right above the first one. While driving at 80 kilometers an hour, Sally's car passes a hydro pole every four seconds. Which of the following is the closest to the distance between two? Is closest to the distance between two poles? Every four seconds. So every four seconds, she's driving 80 kilometers an hour. Oh, I have to convert this to seconds. 80 kilometers per hour is how many meters per second? Um, it's 80,000 divided by 3,600, which is around 20. 20 meters per second? I would say 80. Screw it, I think it's close to that. Nope, all right, well, here goes ice cube number four. Man, these grade sevens are smart these days. Better hope that uh, get that new standard model Lagrangian pretty soon. Uh, Emily was, oh, these questions are impossible. E Emily was at a garage sale where the price of every item was reduced by 10% of its current price every 15 minutes. Exponential decay. You can write that out. At 9 a.m., $10. Uh, as soon as the price fell below $8, Emily bought it. At which time? So it goes to $10, and then it goes $9, and then it goes $9.15, $9.20. Nine thirty, eight dollars ten cents. Nine 
45. It's got to be 945. Hey. What? Oh, I'm missing something here. In the bin at a gross, gross, gross grocery, the number of apples, ratio of the number of apples to the number of oranges is one to four, and the ratio of the number of oranges to lemons is five to two. What is the ratio of apples to lemons? Well, I have apples to oranges. I also have... Ooh, I have five to 20 apples to oranges and five to two. Five to 20 apples to oranges and 20 to eight. Five to eight, it's gotta be C. Please let me get one of these correct. No, oh. All right. Here's another ice cube. Using an equal armed balance, if square, 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 square bounces circle, circle, and circle, circle, circle bounces triangle, triangle, which of the following would not bounce triangle, circle, square? This is so hard without a pencil. This is just me suffering here. Um, four squares bounce two circles, three circles bounce two triangles. So this is just algebra. This is 4x equals 2y, 3y equals 2z. And then this is x plus y plus z, what does not balance x plus y plus z, and you would write down the algebra and you would find out one of these is the correct answer. I can't write stuff down. I do not have the mental power to do that in my head. I'm going to just go on a limb and I'm going to guess uh, B. Nope, well, here goes another ice cube. I'm getting a little cold on a circular track Alfonsi is at point a Alfonsi I like that name and barrel is Diametrically I've never heard that word opposite of point B Alfonsi words clockwise and barrel ones clockwise They run at constant but different speeds after running for a while They noticed that when they pass each other. It's always at the same places on the track. That's a really cool question What is the ratio of their speeds? um Well, it's just arc length. They would pass maybe here, here, and here, I'm guessing. And so I'm guessing the one guy is running two times faster. It's probably two to one. I'm going to guess the answer is D. Of course, I'm going to get tricked here. I just want to get one of these correct. Why is it question 25? Go back to 24. Uh, I'm going to guess the answer is D, two to one. Correct, I got one of them right. It's a miracle. 25, oh, I hate these questions and they just gotta do this at the end. How many different combinations of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters use 48 coins to total a dollar? Now, I know how to sort of set up this problem. It's a integer system of equations here and you really sort of have to draw a table to do this properly. Um, it's like you would go x times p plus y times uh, whoops. You would go x times you would go x times uh, one plus y times five plus z times ten plus q times twenty five is uh, equal to a dollar plus something times forty eight. I'm gonna guess. Ooh. Finish off with a nice guess of C in the middle. Maybe that's right. Nope. And uh, my last ice cube of the night. <sighs> Pretty cold. So what have I learned from this video? I learned that uh, ice cubes are cold. I'm not uh, not very warm right now. Uh, I also learned that. I'm not as smart as I think I am, and even this grade 7 math, I need a pencil to do these questions properly.